Hello, today we're going to talk about how your GPA will be represented on your AMCAS application to medical schools. So this is a graphic that I pulled off of the AAMC website. Um, it is just an example. It does not represent an actual person's academic record. However, this is a great example of how your uh, GPA will be calculated and presented on your medical school application. And together, we're going to go through this information and talk about how it's broken down and how it may be interpreted by med school admissions committees. So here you can see how your GPA is broken up into two columns. You'll see the BCPM, which represents biology, chemistry, physics, and math, and then all other subjects, um, AO. And then together, those are brought, um, brought to determine your total or overall GPA. And then under each column, you'll note that credit hours are represented, um, and then the GPA, which it would represent the grades or the GPA that you received for those classes. Um, in this particular case, um, you can see that this person took quite a few math and science courses during their freshman and sophomore year, didn't do quite as well in those math and science courses compared to all the other subjects, um, but that is something that uh, a med school could take into consideration in terms of the rigor of this student, this particular student's um, academic schedule. A lot of times questions come up about what classes are considered biology, chemistry, physics, and math, and which ones are, would be considered um, all other subjects. And the AAMC has a really great resource um, that very clearly represents uh, which classes go under which category. So you'll note here which classes are considered biology, which are considered chemistry, physics, math, and then it will go through in detail which classes are considered all other subjects. Um, a lot of times students might see economics and hope that it might count as math, um, but it's pretty clearly here stated that um, econ classes are, are considered all other subjects. So, the next piece of that um, is taken into consideration is how your GPA is broken down by year. So some students may be surprised to see that high school is listed on here, but this may represent a student who took dual enrollment classes or classes at a local community college. Um, this is where a student earned college credit and received a grade for that college credit. So in theory, and what they would be required to do is contact that university to produce a transcript that would reflect the grade or the credit and the credit hours um, for that particular class. So for instance, this um, mythical student took six credit hours and got a 4.0 in that. Um, so they did quite well as a high school student earning those six college credits. Next, the GPA is broken down freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year. And then once a student graduates or their degree is granted, um, any other undergraduate courses would go under the post-baccalaureate undergraduate line. So for instance, in our program at UVA, our students earn around 34 um, undergraduate credits in math and sciences. So those would appear on this line. However, occasionally we have students that might take anatomy and physiology or a calculus class before they come into the post -bac program, but after they already graduated from college. Should that be the case, um, any extra classes that they took after they graduated and before they matriculated into a formal post -bac program would still be added to this post -bac undergraduate line here. Um, so altogether, your high school classes, your all four years of undergrad, and any post bac undergraduate coursework is going to be brought together and calculated to be your cumulative undergraduate GPA. So it is worth noting that any graduate coursework will appear on its own line. Um, and this will never be combined with your cumulative undergraduate GPA. So each of those things will stand on its own. So for instance, maybe you have a PhD in English, um, your graduate coursework would appear in this line, 
and that would probably go under all other subjects and then brought forward into the total GPA and hours line. Maybe you earned a master's in biomedical sciences um, degree that would go under the BCPM, but on the graduate line. So those courses um, and grades will never be combined with your cumulative undergraduate GPA. Finally, um, especially in light of COVID, many universities and colleges offered students the opportunity to take classes for pass-fail. Any classes taken for pass-fail are not calculated in your undergraduate GPA or your graduate GPA for that matter. They'll go on this supplemental hours line. Um, and so in this case, somebody earned two credits and they passed those. Should they have failed any credits um, that they took pass-fail, that would go here. And then again, representing some um, advanced level coursework that students did in high school, um, any AP credit will appear here um, as well as CLEP credit. So in terms of AP and CLEP, this is where, again, you've earned college credit and that credit will be noted, but not necessarily the grade that you got in the AP courses or perhaps the CLEP exam. So another thing worth noting um, in terms of how medical schools uh, view uh, somebody's academic trajectory is sometimes they may look for trends. Um, sometimes those may be upward trends, downward trends. Um, it just depends. But here's another example that I pulled from the AAMC website. Um, and we can take a look at all four years that the student was enrolled in undergrad. And we can see that their sophomore year was, was pretty challenging for them. So they went from a 3.8 BCPM GPA down to a 3.12, but then they went back up to the 3.71 and then ultimately a 4.0 before they finished out their senior year. Um, it's worth noting that that transition from their sophomore year to their junior year is pretty significant. That's a really strong upward, um, upward trajectory um, that, is, that is going to be especially appealing to medical schools. It's also worth noting when you go over to the total hours that the person in their junior year took significantly more credits um, than their sophomore year. And again, did much, much better in their coursework while taking so many more credits during their junior year. So that's absolutely something worth noting. As you're applying to medical school, the WMC um, has a very robust website that has a ton of resources on it that we absolutely recommend you check out. Um, you can also take a look at the AMCAS grade conversion cart or grade conversion guide, which is where I um, pulled some of the graphics for this presentation from. And then um, last but not least, uh, if you have further questions, talk with your pre-health advisor, your pre-med advisor at your undergraduate institution. Um, I know they would be more than ha happy to help you um, understand how you're going to be represented um, as you apply to medical school.